Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Worship Splits with Terry. This, what we're looking at today, is the Yoshino, and this is the first video I'm actually recording after I've been on vacation. So I'm back. Uh, sorry for not being able to get to the Yoshino earlier. That's literally because the thing came out, I think, on the Thursday, when I got it in the press account, and I left on the Saturday and morning, and it, or, yeah, I think Saturday morning. And uh, it was just all... I didn't have time to actually practice. I played like one or two games, but I, I do like to play a couple of games before I actually do a review, so I have a feel for the ship. So, the Yoshino, the B-65 project that the Japanese Imperial Navy never got around to actually implement. Now, the Japanese had a problem in World War II. I mean, the Japanese had many problems in World War II, but one of them was uh, down to the naval treaties that were such that the both the British and the American Navy, which what which would they considered their main potential opponents during the war, uh, were allowed more ships in terms of overall tonnage. So the Japanese had to think of a way of how to defeat that. If you are under strength, how do you do this? The plan that they came up with was somewhat based on their experience during the First World War against the Russian Empire, where they, to everybody's surprise, actually won. And it was centered around a decisive battle. The idea being such that if you, even if you are, well, somewhat under strength, if, uh, if you manage to catch a large enemy fleet and uh, manage to defeat it, then they will eventually, you know, give up <laughs> or sue for peace and favorable terms or anything like that. So the idea was to say, uh, we're going to build, not we, we can't build more than, for example, the Americans, also because the Japanese just didn't have the resources to do that. But they wanted to build qualitative, qualitatively bigger and better ships, and their whole strategy was centered around night action, which was, given that nobody really had well-working radar at the, at the onset of the war, which wasn't actually a terrible idea. So the idea was at night, when the Americans can't see us, since we've been practicing a lot, uh, we'll send ships in to crack an outer ring of an enemy, enemy battle group, usually consisting of destroyers and cruisers, with something like heavy units, battleships and carriers. Nobody was really thinking about carriers all that much yet in the center of it. So crack that open in the night, uh, drop some torpedoes onto everything in the night when they can't see us. And then in the morning, the heavy units, like the, the big battleships and everything comes in and mops up. So the B-65 projects were super cruisers. It's kind of similar to the Alaskas. Initially, uh, Alaska wasn't known yet to uh, as a concept to the to the Japanese. So the idea was just to have something which isn't quite a battleship, but is big enough that it can take part in this whole night action thing on the initial attack and deal with enemy cruisers relatively effectively. And then later on, when the Alaskas came around, uh, they figured, uh, yeah, okay, <laughs> we're gonna have to deal with that one as well then. Now, this never really happened, because by the time they would have been built, the Japanese had other problems. Namely, they ran out of carriers very quickly, because the Americans had an uncanny tendency to sink them. And they needed support ships and all kinds of stuff. So they never gotten around to building these, but uh, the plans were there. Now, in-game, we actually have two of the B-65 projects. We have the Yoshino at Tier 10, and we actually have the Azuma at Tier 9, which I haven't reviewed yet, but these are pretty literally... The same ship. You can see that while well, the Yoshino has some AA on on its rear here, where you can see, right? You see the little AA emplacements. These are AA, right? Um, probably, probably AA or secondaries. Not sure, but both, maybe both of them. Uh, the Azuma quite doesn't have that. <laughs> Uh, another thing that the, the Azuma doesn't have is torpedoes. I mean, we're not going to review the Azuma today, and I know that the Azuma has been around for a while, and I've never really been excited about the ship, because you've got medium size, like biggish guns, but um, not much else, really. And what are you going to do with that? Now, the Yoshino, on the other hand, has a different set of things that she can do funny things with. But first, let's go to the armor. Now, these were cruisers. They were not battle cruisers or fast battleships or any of that regard. They are relatively lightly armored. Uh, in fact, they are having probably about the, a somewhat similar armor that, to the main Japanese heavy cruiser line with the 203mm guns. They are a bit slow on, 
on the uptake, and but okay is maneuverable, and um, have an okay speed. The guns are interesting because these are 310 millimeter guns, so kind of mid-sized. Now you think with that caliber you can do well, a lot of unpleasant things to heavy cruisers, and you'd be right. Although I do have to say that the armor piercing is kind of underwhelming. I found that if you hit heavy cruisers with it, uh, especially American heavy cruisers at long range, you're not really getting your money's worth out of them. At, at close range, that's a different story. But um, you don't usually want to play Japanese ships at close range <laughs> of anything, really. So especially against battleships, I op often actually tend to stick to the high explosive um, with a 10% fire chance and an overall 12, um, uh, an overall 12.6 second reload you're actually not having that much of a longer reload than, for example, the ZAL. With, uh, with I think it's got like 11 seconds-ish uh, base reload. It's usually the standard for the Japanese. So these guns reload reasonably fast, and you can do a lot of fires with these. And that's what I usually end up using. Now, um, again, looking at the Azuma, the Azuma was missing something. Uh, <laughs> and... Um, well, it's something you'd be used to from Japanese cruisers from early stages on. Because the Azuma doesn't have any torpedoes, for reasons. The Yoshino, on the other hand, does. The Yoshino actually has, besides the guns, a set of auto-secondaries, which you can really forget about. I mean, if, if you are playing at ranges where your auto-secondaries are opening up, um, you're doing it wrong mostly. <laughs> Unless you're talking about destroyers, maybe. And even then, they're not going to do a huge amount. But, you know, they're there, and we'll take it. And the much more interesting bit here is that the Yoshino gets a very nice set of 16 torpedoes. Eight on each side, uh, quad launches. And they are your very nice long-range Japanese torpedoes. 8.7 km, doing heaps of damage. And, um, yeah, you get 16. So take that, Shimakaze. <laughs> I know that you get more on the Zao, but still, it's um, this is, for me, the biggest difference between that and the Azuma Tier 9, that you can actually, um, you can actually, you, you have options, rather than sitting at your maximum gun range and just raining, stu raining things on other things. The AA is not actually bad on the Yoshino, with 350 on both long and short range. That is a very respectable amount of anti-aircraft firepower. And the concealment with 9.7 kilometers isn't that terrible for something that size either. It's not Alaska levels, bad. <laughs> but um, you, you'll see in a minute how we got there. Other than that, she gets, I think, the same setup as the Azuma gets, which is precise aiming. She gets the rapid reload and a sonar, or two, two charges of sonar, actually. Now, what you really need the sonar for... I mean, this is not a destroyer hunter by any means whatsoever. Uh, she can do a, real, a really reasonable amount of damage against destroyers, but um, she's a bit big to brawl in. It's still useful uh, if you're dealing with long-range torpedoes and you just want to see them coming, but um, this is not your support cruiser, destroyer hunter sort of thing. Anyway, this uh, still makes her like a makes her as a somewhat viable captain trainer because the actual uh, tech tree ships, I think get AA and precise aiming. Let's actually have a quick look. I'm going to take the premiums out. So the Zhao gets, um, yeah, precise aiming and air defense alert, which is not something that you get on the Yoshino, which is a bit of a shame because that would be actually really nice. Honestly, I I, I would trade uh, the Sonar for an AA defense alert any time <laughs> on this ship with her relatively decent AA on this thing. Anyway, um, setup wise. So this is my kind of Japanese cruiser build. And uh, this might come as a bit of a surprise. I don't, I don't know how other people set up their Japanese cruisers, but I like Japanese cruisers to be somewhat stealthy. Now, um, this is the Yoshino. This thing is big. <laughs> it's not stealthy by any means of the word, really. But um, see, the thing is, if you are in a relatively poorly armored, um, rather big ship, and you have a terrible surface detection like the Alaska had, for example, before she got buffed, um, you'd be spotted pretty early on. And battleships really like shooting at you relatively early on before you can get into position, which makes it really hard to do what these things do best, which is to get into positions where they're strong. And that's why 
um, I'm doing the same thing with the with the heavy cruiser line. I have the main battery mod 3 in the first slot to get better precision because these are ranged chips. Don't get me wrong. These are not brawlers. These are ranged chips. Um, you know what's coming already, right? <laughs> anyway, no, th these are ships that you should play at long range. Uh, I, do, I put the steering in slot 2, which is relatively uncommon. But uh, the reason for that is I put the concealment in slot 3. And again, this is the same setup I'm running on my heavy cruisers. This is to get, this is not necessarily to disengage because it is relatively difficult. You, you can use it in the heavy cruisers, which have a better concealment to start with, uh, to, to do things like disengage when you need to, by just stop to fire, stopping fire your guns. Uh, not, so, not so much in, in the Yoshino because that thing's huge. So you still can't, you still can't um, stealth torp either because you've got a 9.7 kilometer surface detection and an 8.7 kilometer torpedo range. But you can get into the initial position. And I find that that ability to get the ship where I want it to be at the onset of the battle without everybody ripping me a new one and um, taking about half my health out very, very quickly well, before I even get to shoot at anybody is, is valuable. Because, and again, these are ships that have quite a bit of uh, firepower, especially with the torpedoes. You see that in the supplies as well. I, I am actually running the high-grade coal for better surface detection on these ships uh, instead of the maintenance pack for more hit points. Now, you could argue that say, yes, you could really use some more hit points on these things because they are not that, that well armored and they take damage quite a lot and they're big. <laughs> but um, again, this for me, this comes down to uh, mostly the initial positioning. That's kind of my value that I'm getting out of this. Other than that, it's ship speed and reload. So... That's the setup for that. Now I have put a commander on here as you would put a commander proper kind almost ish um, for for the for the main line. Now obviously where where it kind of doesn't work is you want the air defense expert probably on the regular heavy cruisers, which here I could go for victorious charge. Uh, the fire supremacy may or may not make sense. Uh, it, it does very much make sense on these ships because you get both a precise aiming and a rapid reload. So you're actually benefiting from both skills, which is unusual. Usually just, you just get one of them. I have decided to go with exploit weakness instead of recon and surveillance because while the, the Hydra is nice, um, I'm, I'm not a support cruiser. I'm not a mainly Hydra cruiser that would go and chase down destroyers. That's not what you do in these things. So it's much more interesting to uh, do more damage to things that are already on fire. Uh, the marksman skill makes sense because you do get the precise aiming and again this is what you would get on on the tech tree line uh, i've got extinguisher because i haven't obviously set her up for a fire prevention build and japanese ships burn like french <laughs> uh, the demo demo expert is kind of the only thing that makes sense because you don't have much in terms of secondaries now again the master reloader doesn't make sense on either the battleship line or the heavy cruiser line because well <laughs> you don't get the rapid reload but if you bounce it, if you've got both, I get if you've got Azuma as well, maybe. Um, I would I would struggle here between IFHE and APCS. Uh, if you're cruiser killing, APCS is probably the better choice. Because, again, the 310s are good, but they are not that great against cruisers. And, uh, in terms of just racking up the citadels. On the other hand, the IFHE might give you more full pens on... Uh, on battleships with high explosive, which is probably going to be your main your main ammunition type that you're using against enemy battleships. Um, so yeah, no, haven't explored that, but yeah, I've, this is how I've set her up, and the, the the captain again, this is a bit more specialized than than I would like, so it's not a great captain trainer, but it kind of still works if you would take a couple of compromises and, for example, um, yeah, accept that you would run the air defense alert on that captain. And um, probably the master reloader instead of, well, you know, these skills are not that useful, really. Honor Seeker, maybe, uh, might be an, a more interesting skill that you would take. I wouldn't usually take compartment maintenance on a, on a ship, very rarely. Um, yeah, so anyway, slightly complicated. Uh, as for camo, the historical camo, if we were going to put it on, gives us range, 
it gives us uh, better surface detection and it gives us more mobility, which is good. These are all good skills to have, uh, or good, good improvements to have. Long range, snipey ship, that sort of thing. But unlike the Azuma, has torpedoes, which means you, she gets a lot more offensive potential when you actually need it for those kind of scenarios where you do need to get stuck in and very quickly do some damage to something. She does have the torpedoes. All right then, um, let's take a look. Okay, we have an almost all tier 10 battle. Um, I am sailing with the Seaborn Assault camo, which is a good camo for for this for these kind of ships. Very good all round camo if you don't want to have if you don't have the historical or you don't want to put anything on because it does give you a bit more hit points and it gives you better concealment. All right, enemy team. Oh, this is Yamato City here. We've got six Yamatos, three on our side and three on the enemy team. Uh, what else? We've got a Freddy, enemy team has Brindisi, double sh tri triple Shima. Triple Yama, triple Shima, okay. And uh, we have myself, Shima, and Gearing. Now, we're playing Deadlock, so let's go and see how that turns out. Deadlock is one of the newer maps, and it's one of the... I I do recall playing something large-ish on this map, let's see. Um, no carrier, so I might either, go, I, I might either sail... Um, uh, esc uh, destroyer escort for the bus for the battleships, depending on where we're spawning. Okay, we're over at A. So I might also just go with the destroyer, whatever that is here. Okay, it's the gearing. So um, where are we going? Um, yeah, I I agree. I agree. Uh, let's grab A and maybe C. Uh, yeah, and um, let go of B. So let's see if we can secure these these flanks and do something about things here. Uh, let's see what kind of opposition we're facing. But I'm gonna go with Gearing. And Gearing should be able to deal with Shima relatively easily. But um, well, the, I am not primarily a escort the battleships and shoot at destroyers kind of ship here. Okay, we've got two Yamas over there, and we've got Shima in A. So that was the right choice, because if I can do something about Shima, uh, that's a good thing. Okay, start opening up the Yama. And um, I know that there's Shima in there. Okay, you can't see me, because I am uh, was shooting behind the island. Let's see if we can get into position before uh, they can shoot back at me. Okay, there's the other Yamato. And uh, Shima is somewhere there, so I do have to be, be a bit careful about torpedoes. And uh, gearing needs to spot for me. Okay, so what we're going so we've got two Yamatos and a Shimakaze, and it's gearing at me. That's good um, because that means we have uh, okay, that's a fire on the Yamato. That means we have we're holding down more ships than we are actually um, we're actually committing. So the rest of our team is in is is in okay double fire. He, he damage cons. The rest of our team is actually in superior uh, has has fire has super, superior firepower. Okay, and uh, okay, there's the Shima. A couple more shots on the Yama, unfortunately no fire. Okay, Shima is out. Uh, that means there might be torpedoes in the water. And uh, let's get some shots off and then sail behind the island. I do not want to get aggressive with two Yamatos, but Shima is out of the cap circle. So Gearing can Gearing can probably hold the two Yamas down, especially if they're shooting at me because they can't see Gearing. Okay, there comes some torpedoes. But let's see if I can... Um, I don't know if this were two or three spreads. Uh, I can see see if I can catch uh, Shima off guard somewhere. Okay, that's another fire. And um, he was coming around here. So just in case this were only two th two spreads, I'm gonna put uh, the Hydra up. See if there's anything else coming. But Shima should be somewhere around that island there. So, okay, we're holding the cup. We've got uh, we've got two Yamas down there, and and Shima. Okay. Yamas behind the island in a defense. Up, oh, okay. Gearing takes out the first Yamato. Very nice. So now it's just down to Shima and the second Yamato. Okay. What are, what's the rest of our team doing? Uh, someone's going B. Oh, there's Shima again. Okay. Now I'm not going to hit him from here. I'm just going to try and set another fire. So uh, looks like we're getting a third Yamato and another Shimakaze over, <laughs> over at A cap. So uh, our team has massive fire superiority over around C cap. And we uh, we just need to the two of us here just need to hold things down. So I'm gonna try and draw fire away from Yama. Uh, Shima goes behind the island. Gearing should be able to do, to deal with Shima if he needs to, but um, he is got two fires burning. He's down to half health. Okay, I'm gonna need to get in the cup, 
and um, give him some breathing space because he's getting he's getting hammered there and I need that gearing. All right, uh, Shima is not going to chase down my gearing. No, you're not. Bugger off. Uh, can I get shots off? Okay, Shima's running. Uh, Yama's shooting at me. I'm too way too close to what I want to be. But um, he fluffed some shots. I don't think Shima is going to come around the corner. Is he? Is he? Are you? Okay, I do need to get... Uh, and that's what I meant earlier with the torpedoes. The angles aren't great, but if you need to, um, you do have them ready. So now they should be... Now they should be somewhat blocked. No, we've got three Yamatos. We, we killed one. Uh, two more here. Uh, are you coming? Are you seriously coming around the corner? I was not expecting that. Okay, here, have some torpedoes. But now I'm broadsiding a Yamato. That's unfortunate. Uh, it would actually have been nice to have the armor piercing loaded here, but um, yeah, this is going to hurt. Yes, uh, but it could have could have been worse. But yeah, now you're going to take a lot of torpedoes. Uh, there's the big caliber. <laughs> We've got the auto secondaries opening up. Um, tempting to turn around and get the other set of torpedoes away, but um, uh, nope. I'm just gonna run at this point and try not to be killed by Yamato. I'm just uh, I'm using the rapid reload just to get some more shots because I do want to set him on fire if I can. Uh, just gonna try and dodge his shots as much as I can and see if I can get behind the island. Uh, because he is chasing me, which means he's not chasing gearing. So gearing is right here. So gearing should get some sort of, yeah, there come the gearing torps. Uh, we have lost the cup for now, but uh, that Yamato is on low health. The other one should eat some gearing torps. And, um, and then we go and grab our cup back. Okay, I'm starting to run relatively low on health here. Uh, okay. But I, I am drawing fire from both Yamatos, which means that gearing is free to torp them. Which is what I want. Okay, gearing... Oh, it doesn't kill him. Okay, that's um, unfortunate. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I need to... Oh, there come some Shima Torps, but I might be just out of range. Yeah, I know, we need to get that Yama down. Okay, heal, 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 because there comes the next salvo. Okay, he fluffed the shot, he overshot. Uh, no. And I should get him. Okay, Yama down. That's, an, that's the second Yama down, and that just leaves the third Yamato down there in the capture, capture circle. Okay, and <laughs> I am somewhat out of, out of health at this point, but we've held the cup for as long as we could, and we have held down um, one Shima uh, and three Yamatos at some point. <laughs> uh, Shima seems to have given up, which means that uh, Gearing can go back. But uh, we've lost all three cups, but we have held a cup and we've held down so much of the team for so long that we, uh, we're still ahead on points, but just about. So uh, we do, yeah, Thanksgiving can take the cup back. And uh, there's still one more Yamato. Okay, Freddy kills Shima, that should seal the deal, because now we are way ahead on points. We're getting C and we're getting A back. Our team has managed to... Uh, finally managed to secure C again, and uh, they're down to one Yamato and one Shima, and that Yamato is on low health. So we'll just get some parting shots in. Okay, uh, well, they made us work for this one, didn't they? <laughs> I'm down to 1,000 health, and I've done all, I've used all my three heals. Uh, okay, um, this Shima, maybe we can get some parting shots in on Shima, just making sure that I don't run into any torpedoes. Because we are just, uh, we're not that many points ahead. Um, I'm not gonna hit them anymore. <laughs> Let's get some shots out. Shima's closer, maybe I can still, nah. Okay, uh, th yes. That's kind of how what you can do with this ship. Um, she has a decent health pool. She doesn't have the greatest amount of armor, but she does have a relatively decent health pool for a tier 10. And she can hold her own for a while, uh, if you get lucky. <laughs> I, I, I did get I did get lucky here quite a bit, and absolutely congratulations to that gearing. Very well played. Um, uh, we we have I would say we have carried our team somewhat here <laughs> by holding the holding four uh, at some point four enemy ships down in this cup and even holding the cup for a while. But yeah, um, this is not a terrible ship. Personally, I don't know how she compares to the Zhao. Because the Zhao is just a regular heavy cruiser with the 203 millimeters. Um, she can do a very respectable amount of damage with fires and with her main guns, even against battleships. Uh, against cruisers as well, but not at super long ranges. I do get, if you get around six, seven kilometers maybe, and you, you just um, drop torpedoes and uh, 
uh, you can citadel things like Venezia's from that distance pretty com comprehensively with the 310s, then you can do a very, very um, respectable amount of damage. I would definitely take the ship over Azuma. So, not a bad ship. Really not a bad ship. Uh, I could see myself playing that thing uh, a little bit more often. That's it for today. Thanks, everybody. And I'll see you next time. Bye.